sorry about that. A little camera flying around over here. So if we look at our addition problem here, I have one, two, three, four fourths. I know that four fourths is a whole. And then whatever is left over is going to be greater than a whole. So if I look at this, my four fourths is my whole here, my four fourths is my whole here, my four fourths is my whole here, and then I have my one fourth left over. So five fourths would be the same as one and one fourth. Let's try this now with thirds. It's gonna be the same idea, just your diagrams obviously will look a little bit different. So here's a new one for you, and I wanna think this one through in your head really quick before I draw your diagrams. One third plus one third plus one third plus one third plus one third. So I'm gonna give you a quick second to think through what you think it is. So first question is, can we make a whole? Well, three thirds are one whole, aren't they? I see three thirds right here. So I can definitely make a hole. I like to box it and then draw my hole below it. It kind of gives me a little reminder. If you wanna do that in your math notebook today as you're working through the problems, I think it's pretty helpful. And then you'll see here we have one, two thirds left over. If I was to go through this, I'd say one, two, three, four, five thirds is equal to one, and two thirds. And I really think boxing the whole out really kind of shows you, okay, those are taken away. Like these guys are gone, these are one whole, they're accounted for what's left. And again, you could do that with a tape diagram or you could do that with your pie charts, whatever you wanna use. I really think it's easier to write it out this way and I think it's gonna translate better to what we do next. But if you're really attached to the tape diagram, that's fine as well. So this is called a mixed number because we have a whole and a fraction. So it's mixed. It's a mix between a whole and a fraction. So now what we have is I want us to kind of think of how we would read some mixed numbers here. And these ones might seem a little bit bigger, but they're read exactly the same. So let's start with an easy one. So I have one plus one sixth. And so what we wanna do is we wanna add the word and here, and. I have one and one sixth. It never says it here, but whenever you have the mixed number, think of the addition sign as and. Think of if I was looking up here, I have to kind of connect these guys, right? So what I like to think to myself is, okay, these can't be mixed. They're a whole and a fraction, they're separate things, but if I put the word and in it, it kind of allows them to mesh or to Velcro together. So I wouldn't say one, one sixth. If I said one, one sixth, one, one sixth would just be one sixth. I don't have one, one sixth. That'd be very different than one and one sixth. So when you add this word and in there, it tells people this is a mixed number, I need to combine them together. So let's try a couple more on this. Let's try, and I'll pause for a second to let you think through it. If I said, again, if I said two seven eighths, all right, well two seven eighths would be two seven eighths. That's not what we have here. We have two holes and seven eighths. So we'd have two, I'm gonna throw this in here for you guys. Remember this kind of glues it together, two and seven eighths. So it's telling your reader or your, whoever you're talking to that, hey guys, I have two holes and I have another seven eighths. So if you were thinking of this in tape diagrams, you're telling everyone, and I'm not gonna split these first ones up, I'm gonna use these as holes. I have one hole, I have two holes, and I have, do a quick split here, another seven eighths. Otherwise you're telling them, hey, I have two seven eighths. Okay, well, that would look like I wouldn't have this, 
I wouldn't have this. I literally would have two seven eighths, which is very, very, very different. Actually, that would, sorry guys, I gave you two eighths. It would be two groups of seven eighths, which would bring us, got the Monday morning brain going on here. It would be the same as two seven eighths, which again is not the same. So let's practice saying just a few more. And you'll notice that no matter how large the number is, the process doesn't change. So I have four plus 11 twelfths. Well, it's still the same thing here. This plus sign is still and doesn't change. So I'd have four and 11 twelfths. I could get so huge with this. I could get to 20, 30, 40, 50, and it's gonna be still said the same way. So here's a new one for you. Now you might look at this and be like, wow, this is crazy. I don't think I'd wanna draw out one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth until I get to 20 holes because that would take forever. But if I look at this, I could still read this number. It doesn't change. I know that I have and to glue it together, right? So I have 20 and even if I gave it to you guys without our addition sign here, you would know that in order to combine a mixed number, to make it mesh, to make it glue, we have to say and. So I mean, that would be 20 and 1 fifth. I could get, this never, ever, ever changes. It doesn't matter. Your mixed number, you're always putting and in the middle. So as large as we could get here, you guys could still make it work. So I want to draw a quick, mixed number for you. And I want you in your own head to think really quick how I would say this mixed number. There are two ways we could do it. We could do it as an improper fraction where our numerator is bigger than our denominator. or we could do it as a mixed fraction where we pull out our holes. Again, they represent the same amount, so it doesn't matter how you say it, but if someone does say put this in an improper fraction or put this in a mixed fraction, it does matter then. Then you have to use the type of format it's asked, but again, we know they represent the same amount. So I know that I'm working in halves because each circle is split into halves. So I know that my fraction is going to be written in halves of some sort. And I know that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven halves. So my improper fraction, that's where my numerator is bigger. So that's where I would say I have seven halves. Your denominator always comes from how many pieces are your holes split into? And then your numerator is how many of those do I have? Well, I have seven halves but my mixed number is when I pull out my holes. So I have one hole, two holes, three holes, and one half left over. And again, I could show this with, oh man, seven halves is gonna be a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven halves, that's a really long addition problem. But I know that each, it only takes two halves to make a hole. So I can pull a lot of holes out of here. Here's one hole, here's two holes, here's three, and then I just have this one little half left over. So if you guys wanna try this method today of writing out the addition problem and pulling them out, I think this will be incredibly helpful for you to see exactly what is happening. So we're gonna be working on this a little bit today. And the strategy that you wanna use is totally up to you. Let me pull up one of your workbook pages really quick and we'll go through a few problems together. 
All right, guys, so now we're gonna look over a few of your pages from today. Um, and you'll notice that we are now working with mixed numbers and no longer just regular fractions. But again, same thing applies, same rules apply. Um, we're gonna be switching them from mixed numbers to fractions and fractions to mixed numbers, um, which we've been working on here. And I think this is where your addition um, sentences come into play. So let me get my pencil out here. All right, so. All right, so what we got going on here is we have three and two fifths. If I want, I can write this out into fifths to show myself where these holes come in. So I would have three holes I know that would be Two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths, right? So, or one hole, I guess, would be two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths. So it's a little bit harder right on the screen, I apologize. So I have two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths. Five times would give me one hole. Oop, one second, guys. I apologize, I am having the absolute worst Monday brain today and I clearly need to drink more coffee because I'm messing up a lot of things that I'm saying today, which is not normal, but <laughs> it happens, right guys? We've had a rough morning. So um, our fifth here, I don't know why I was giving you guys two fifths plus two fifths, I was focusing on here. So showing you what not to do this morning. We are working in fifths and I don't know why I was doing that. So it really would be one fifth five times. I am so sorry, guys. It's been a rough morning with my dog at the vet and I am really just, my brain is fried. So um, one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth and one more. So I know that five one-fifths or five-fifths equals one whole, right? So I would have one, two, three, four, five of these would only be one whole. Well, I know that I have three of these, three of these holes here, as you can see. So this would only be one whole. I'd need another set of five-fifths and another set of five-fifths. Well, one way you can look at this is three, times five is 15. And where I came up with that is we have three holes times it takes five fifths, as we showed up here, to make each hole. So it would take 15 fifths to make three holes. Well, I'd have 15, and if you want, you could go like this, 15 fifths plus two fifths, and this is what it was asking as my total one. I know that 15 plus two equals 17 fifths. I apologize, the little drawing thing on Zoom is not the best. So let's try one more. Um, let's go down to, that one was pretty large. We kind of started with the hardest one first. Um, let's go to four and one fourth. That's a good one right here. So look at number four. Um, so I know here, again, four fourths makes a whole. If you really want, you could write out four times. You could do one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. Um, four different times. I think it's helpful if you just write it out once to kind of remind yourself that I know that there are four fourths in a whole. And if you guys don't even need to use the addition sentence on this one, you don't have to. Um, I'm just kind of showing it for you if you want to use it and then you can figure out. So I know that four fourths equals a whole. One, two, three, four. Okay, well I have four of those holes. So one, sorry, let's turn this into four. It takes four fourths to make a whole. times four of them gives me 16 fourths. 
And then my mixed number has this little fourth over here hanging out. So plus one more fourth gives me 17 fourths. All right, let me clear this up. We'll do one more practice problem and then I'll let you guys go on your own. So here we're just doing the opposite. It's where they're giving you the fraction and then you need to write it as a mixed number. So same idea, just backwards. So I know that it takes seven sevenths to make a whole. If you wanted to, again, if this helps you visualize, it gets really tricky though, guys, when you're doing like 51 tenths. Eight thirds you could draw out, 10 sevenths you probably could, but once we start to get too big, it's just gonna get, it's gonna get a little bit messy. Um, so I would say if you wanna do this for the smaller ones, you can, but I think at some point we're gonna kinda get past this because it just gets too messy. So you could do one seventh plus one seventh 10 times and pull out your seven sevenths. Um, but another way I like to think of it that I think is a little bit cleaner when we get to these bigger numbers is I know it takes seven sevenths to make a whole, right? So the way that I like to think about this is, and I kind of like to sketch on this a little bit, so maybe you write it in your math notebook as you're doing it today. I'm gonna write one whole, and I know that I took away seven sevenths to make that whole. So I'm gonna write 10 minus seven, because I took away seven of those to make this whole. And I like to write my whole down, or multiple if there's more than one, as I go through this, and then to kind of make little notes up top so that way I know exactly where I am. So I took away seven sevenths, that gave me a whole. Well now I know I have three sevenths remaining because 10 minus seven is three. Another way you could do it is you could look at number eight. You're like, I know that five, I could pull out one whole because five goes into 12 two times. So I could pull out more than one hole. I could pull up two holes. I know that five times two is 10. So I'm gonna take away 10 because it would take 10 fifths to make two holes. And then 12 minus 10 is two. I have two fifths left. Um, what I was gonna say before with the one hole thing is if you want, um, Another way I've kind of taught this is if you want to pull out one hole at a time, if that's easier for you. So if you're like, okay, so I know that 15, um, I can take out four and I'm left with, and I kind of do this off to the side. I'm left with one and then take away four and 11 fourths is left over. If I take away another four, All right, well then I have, now I'm at two holes and I have seven fourths left over. I could take away another hole. And now I would be at, this is much easier if you're doing it with a pencil. There we go. I would be at three holes and I have three fourths left over. Four can't go into three anymore. So I'm at three and three fourths. That one just requires a little bit more scratch. Really, I would like it if we could do it with our math facts, guys. So 10 goes into 51 five times. I have one tenth left over. And again, we'll continue to practice this. And if it doesn't feel super comfortable yet today, we will have two days of it. So let's go do it to try today. And then if we need more help, we'll just keep working on it. 